Funding for Four Eyes Furniture is provided in part by supporters on Patreon. If you want to find out how you can support the show, click the link in the description. So as you already know, Sean has this piece that he calls the Glen Lounge Chair. And he's been building it for a long time, and we recently updated it for a set of plans, and yada yada yada. Who cares, right? I mean, a lounge chair is great and all, but I think we all know that the Ottoman's the star of the show. I mean, think about it. When you sit in a chair, you don't even see it. It's behind you or under you or whatever. But the ottoman? The ottoman you see. It's right there, under your feet, front and center, star of the show. Alright, but seriously, this piece is small but there's still a lot going on so let's talk a little bit about the design and then we'll get into building. So this was a unique challenge in that we were building a new piece that needed to match the style of another piece that's already existed for five years, as opposed to how most people would design a lounge chair in Ottoman, which would be at the same time. And to us, the most obvious look was going to be essentially mirroring the leg assembly shape and scaling it down, but we didn't want to just settle on that. So next we played with the idea of a cantilevered leg shape, and we both really liked this approach more. Looks aside, the downside of this type of design is that it's going to be inherently weaker. More on that later when we test it out. But the upside is that it makes getting in and out of the chair a bit easier because it gets rid of what would be the main obstruction, the inner leg. Now, while we both really liked this shape, we felt that both of these had needlessly large footprints, so we refined the idea a little bit more and landed on this version, which is the one that we're going to build. All right, so at this point, I've got my material cut into some oversized chunks and milled down to its final thickness. And next we can start working on finalizing the shapes. So here I've got my templates and I'm retracing the shapes back onto each of my work pieces. And since each template has one flat edge along the outside, I'm making sure to line that up with the flat edge of my work piece. And if you want to build this lounge chair in Ottoman or any of our other pieces, I'm going to leave a link in the description. But just so you know what you're getting, it's about two hours worth of detailed video instruction, a ton of dimensional drawings and information, and the option to include these templates if you need them. And if you don't, they all include digital files so you can cut or print your own. Oh, and we get this question all the time, but I always forget to mention it in the videos, but they come in both Imperial and Metric. Okay, so here I'm grabbing a scrap piece of plywood and I'm gonna set my fence in position at about 12 and a half inches to establish a cut edge. Then I'm going to work my way through each of my template pieces and do a total of four setups like you see here in order to cut all of my joint faces. So at this point, my pieces are still pretty much oversized everywhere except the joint faces, and we can go ahead and assemble everything now. And to do this, you can use whatever you'd like, but we'd recommend either dowels or dominoes, and the process for using either is pretty much the same. So I'm going to be placing two 10 by 50 dominoes in each joint, and if you wanted to go with dowels, obviously there are hundreds of jigs out there, all a little different, but I've had good luck with this one from Rockler. And for this joint, I'd go with the largest that you can cut in. So in this case, it would be half an inch and two should do the trick. That said, three eighths would be fine also. 
And if you're only capable of cutting smaller ones, you could just do four. Your call. Either way, the exact placement isn't really important. You just really want to make sure that you don't place them so close to an edge that they're going to protrude through. While my legs are drying, I can start making the actual panel that the ottoman cushion is going to go on. And that's going to be made out of a bunch of slats where the frame is made out of walnut and the interior is made of beech. And these all need to be three quarters of an inch thick, but we decided to make the entire piece using these two inch thick slabs that Sean had laying around, or I guess standing around. And that meant that we had to resaw them. With everything milled and one edge jointed, I used a crosscut sled to bring everything down to its final length. So I'm gonna need to cut two walnut pieces to 20 and a half inches, and then the rest of my pieces to eight and a half inches. And then I could rip them to their final widths, which are three and two and three quarters respectively. Next I did a quick dry assembly with everything clamped together in the final position that I wanted it and started marking up my joinery. And here again you could use dowels or dominoes or you could use pocket screws on either the top or bottom side since those will get covered by a cushion. The last thing to do before assembling is round over all of my interior slats as well as the inside edges of my two shorter walnut frame pieces. And this can get kind of confusing with so many pieces, so just make sure that you label everything and pay attention to those labels. At this point my panel is dry, and there's really only one piece left to make, and that's this little stretcher at the bottom. And honestly you probably don't need it, we just like the looks of it, and because of that you can really make it any size and place it wherever you want. But there is one crucial dimension, and that is that the length needs to match the panel. So next I'm going to trim my panel to its final size, and cut the stretcher at the same time using the same stop block to ensure that they match. So now instead of our panel being 20 and a half inches long, it's probably like 20 and 15, 30 seconds. But I don't think anybody's gonna notice. The next morning with everything dry, I got my first real look at the two pieces together. And I was really happy with the geometry, so I could move on to doing a little strength test. Not on these pieces, but on a quick little mock-up that I put together. So here I'm gluing up that test piece, and I decided to make one of the legs using dominoes and the other one using dowels. And then instead of building an elaborate panel, I just pocket hold and attached a piece of plywood. So we're just gonna screw the panel on top because we don't want to test the attachment this way so we know that this can't fail. I'm also gonna make sure I don't drive any screws that connect to that miter because I want this to be as clean of a test as possible. And because I like to live on the edge, I'm not even gonna pre-drill. Yeah. That's a nice drive. Ooh, that was an even nicer drive, maybe. That could be up for a best drive of the year, 2021. I don't want to jinx it, it's only January, but you never know. It was a good drive. Should I get right on the edge? Of course. Yeah, I, I don't think this is a concern. I wouldn't use it as a seat. I, don't, I hope people don't use that as a seat. That thing that I'm referring to, which I have not built yet, 
Should we try to break it? Probably. So obviously this was not super scientific. This has an angle that doesn't. And I know this looks a lot chunkier, but just so people can tell, so like this, the length of this joint is about four inches, four inches also. This one is about four inches and this one is way bigger. This one's like almost five inches. So I'm sure they, they have different strengths, but I, th I think the point remains. All right, now let's break this. Okay, we're both standing like on the edge of it. Yeah, this thing's a beast. <laughs> There's no break in that thing. <laughs> Except with a sledgehammer. What else? Probably hundreds if not thousands, <laughs> or much more than a person weighs yeah. who, could, who could walk themselves over to sit on this. Right. So it's just bending, which means it's really comfortable probably. It's like a big spring. That was fun. Next, I'm gonna attach all three of my template pieces to my assembly and take several passes with a router to finalize the shape. And since the outside edges are already flat, I don't need to do anything along those edges. And I also don't need to get these ends, which are gonna get cut later with the saw. And I'm also gonna kind of just float away in the transition areas of the curves. That way I'm leaving some extra material that I can clean up later by sanding. By the way, if you're looking for more information about how much wood you'll need or any specialty tools that you would need to build this, you can find it on our website, which we built using Squarespace. So I've been using Squarespace for over four years now, and honestly, it's been great. Prior to that, I used to code everything on my own, and that's great if you like doing that, but it's also hard and takes time, and honestly, the outcome wasn't as nice as the templates that I use now with Squarespace. And the worst part is, it was taking me away from doing the thing that I really should be focusing on, which is making furniture. Now, in addition to Squarespace making it super easy to build and maintain your site, buy domains and all that stuff, they also have plenty of e-commerce, which has been really helpful since we started selling plans. Things like inventory management, a simple and secure checkout process, and unlimited products allows us to easily manage online transactions. So if you're thinking about starting a website, or even if you already have one, you owe it to yourself to give Squarespace a look to see if it might be a better option for you. Just head over to squarespace.com slash four eyes for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch, use the offer code four eyes for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right. Thanks Squarespace. At this point, all of our pieces are made and we can get to assembling. Now, where you put the panel in your ottoman is up to you. Basically, anywhere between the upper horizontal piece will work, but we want to have it angling slightly away from the chair. So the easiest way to tackle this would be with either pocket hole screws or regular screws. So if you're doing it with pocket holes, you basically just cut a few into both ends of your panel, clamp it in position, and attach. And if you're doing it with regular screws, you'd clamp it in position, then drill some pilot holes, then countersink where the screws are going to go, buy or make some plugs, dowels would work as well, and then assemble and tap them in and clean it up. And in these shots, I was just doing it on the dining chair we built a month back. But we're going to do it a slightly harder way, and that is with a domino, which I know sounds counterintuitive, but involves quite a bit more math and marking. So I'm going to start by cutting four dominoes into each end. 
Then I can transfer those marks onto the inside face of my leg and grab a piece of scrap plywood, which I'll transfer those marks onto again, this time going up and around the corner. Then I can use that straight edge as a fence and a guide to cut my mortises into the leg assembly. And by doing that, I'm able to perfectly position my mortises at an arbitrary angle with precision so that we can get the exact angle and reveal that we want on our panel. Then I can just do the same thing on my stretcher piece. Now before we assemble anything, I'm going to put a few more edge details on my piece. So those are going to be roundovers on the top edge of my stretcher as well as the front and back of my panel piece. And then on the top and front edges of the leg, I'm going to take a large roundover bit and set it so that it's not quite getting a full roundover, and that's going to leave this thumbnail profile shape on the finished piece. Alright, so I know that we got a little detailed with this one, but seriously, if you like this kind of information and you want to build these kinds of things, I highly urge you to check out our plans. This is just scratching the surface of the kind of detail that we get into. Alright, well, that was a lot of work, so if you don't mind, I'm going to enjoy the fruits of my labor and take a seat. Special thanks to all of my Patreon members for making these videos possible. In addition to the obvious good vibes that you're going to get from supporting, members at different tiers receive things like t-shirts, field notes booklets, $15 off plans, and more. So if you want to find out more about how you can support the show, click the link in the description, and as always, no pressure. Alright, see you in the next one.